Hey everybody, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and in this video, I want to talk to you about Light Key 3. I want to give you my review of it, I want to talk about what's new, and I want to help you decide whether this is a good lighting console for you or not. So, to begin, I have a previous review that I did when I was pretty new to Light Key, and it was still Light Key 2. Now, this was only a month or two ago, but the Light Key team doesn't really seem to announce anywhere what they're working on. They just put things out. And so when 3 came out, I quickly downloaded it, checked out the new features, and then I said, you know what? I went ahead and redid all my tutorials inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs, and then I said, I want to make a new review because this is going to enable me to let everybody know what's new in Light Key 3, and after a few months of using it, really diving in deep, let, let you know, is this a good fit for you, or should you move on to something else? Because Light Key in itself is a good piece of software, but it's not right for everyone. But for those people who it is right for, they're really happy with the results and with Light Key. So I've got a link below to buy Light Key. It generates a small commission if you check it out and buy it through my link. And now let's continue on. So what's new with Light Key 3? I, I want to hit that quickly first and then we'll dive into the rest of the review. So in 3, they've updated the preview in a couple great ways. That's the screen you look at that's got your lights on it. I'll show it here. And one thing they did is they added gobos to that preview, which is pretty cool. Now when you put a gobo into a spotlight, that a moving light spot, it visualizes somewhat that gobo. You can see kind of what it looks like. It's cool. Also, they made it so it scales better. That means if you create it on, you know, a laptop and then you bring it to a desktop with a large monitor and a different resolution, or you shrink the window, um, it's going to scale that accordingly so that you're not zooming in or out to just try to make the thing fit. So that's a huge bonus as well. They also call it a, a true 3D visualizer or preview. I forget the exact words that they use, but to be honest, it's not 3D. Um, it's more of an enhanced, it's just like a 2D visualizer that a lot of things have, like Onyx, another console I cover, has a 2D visualizer. And they can call it sort of 3D just because as the light beam goes down or up, you, it kind of scales the length to make it feel 3D. But it's not a full visualizer like Capture, which I use, uh, which is actually a 3D visualizer. So I want to put that out there because you might see that in their release notes and be like, you know, in their What's New page and be like, oh, 3D visualization. And it's not that. It's cool. It's nice but it's not that. Awesome. So what do I like about Light Key and who is it good for? Well, Light Key has its strong suit in exactly their tagline. They say that it's lighting control, Mac style, and that couldn't be more true. People who love Macs and who are trying to control a basic lighting rig with some basic control are going to love Light Key. That makes it great a lot of times for churches or music venues or bands or even... I don't usually recommend it for theater, but you could use it if you're a Mac person. On the licensing side, you can get 24 channels free with the demo version. So I'm going to put my link below so you can click it, go download that demo version, check it out. And then they have various tiers for the amount of channels you want to control. Now, at this point, unless you're doing a pretty simple show... I probably wouldn't advise controlling more than 512 channels or one DMX universe with Light Key. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But the things that I really like about Light Key is that the MIDI control is super refined and super powerful. I actually just finished a video in the labs where I talk about all the different ways that I like to use it in a show because it's not just for controlling playback, but you can use it on the programming side to control attributes like intensity and like the pan and tilt of your moving lights. So you can have a console-like control surface in front of you that you're programming on and not have to have your hands on the mouse and keyboard the whole time. I love that. It speeds things up when you're programming. 
The next great thing about it is the Ableton and other DAW integration. The fact that it can MIDI connect and even direct connect with Ableton and get things like the tempo and get cues fired from it makes it really great for people that are using these platforms that also want to control lights. The third thing that I really love about LightKey is the wizard. When you first start a show in LightKey, it's going to go ahead and it does a really good job of walking you through the steps to set up your show file. It's really dead simple and they walk you through the order you want to do things in and how to do it and their wizard does a great job. It's one of the things that makes it really Mac-like and truth be told it's something I would love to see within more lighting controllers because it makes it easy for you. Then last, um, as I mentioned before, the pricing. The fact that they um, price it out based on the numbers of channels you use with multiple tiers means that you're not going to pay for a lot more or a lot less than you need. You're going to pay for exactly what you need. And I like that it's a yearly subscription. Obviously, I run a subscription site as well. And the truth is, well, it's more expensive than some other alternatives. When we pay the developers yearly and on an ongoing basis, the people that make this software, then it encourages them to innovate, to put the time and the money in, to make new versions, to improve things, and to continually make it better. Uh, on, that's why a lot of software is going this direction. It's not always a good thing, but I think in this instance it is, that the manufacturer, the, the programmers behind the software, behind LightKey, they don't have to worry about, oh man, in LightKey 1, we sold a billion copies, but now we're not selling anything. And then they would have, you know, a billion users coming at them. I know that's a little far-fetched to be such a drop-off. But they'd have all these users coming to them for support, for help, for new features. And they wouldn't have any money coming in to fund that stuff. So I think it makes sense in this application that it's a yearly thing. You know, sure, it's another one of those things where... I like to just buy things outright, but I see why it's a good reason. Now, LightKey, oh, LightKey, I like it. Like I mentioned before, it's simple, it walks you through what you need to know, and it can do some fairly powerful things. But there are some things in LightKey that drive me up the wall. And I'm going to go over them here quickly, and then I'm going to follow up this video with another one that talks more and shows you in detail what frustrates me about some of these features and whether that's going to apply to you or not. So once that comes out, you'll be able to catch it here. The first thing that I really frustrates me about LightKey is the way the preset palettes work. In lighting consoles, there's a variety of ways to handle the building blocks that you put into queues. And LightKey chooses to attach fixtures to those preset palettes. So if I only want half my lights to apply a certain preset palette, I literally have to build a whole new preset palette just with those half lights. And now maybe I want to do a different group of lights to that preset. Oh, new preset, new preset, new preset. At the end of the day, I've got so many presets, my head's going to explode, and I could have done it a lot simpler in a lot of other consoles. Um, pan till. I was getting so frustrated for like the first month of using LightKey every time I went to adjust pan tilt on my lights. The movement, because it's not in the design tab at the bottom of the screen. Even though everything else is, there's no shortcut, no button to press, no nothing to control pan tilt and I really wish they would put something there. Next, um, on the topic of groups, similar to the preset palettes, it frustrates me kind of to no end that um, lights can only be part of one group. So if I have a group that's all of a particular type of light, and then I want to create a group that's all the lights on one truss or one position, say all the backlight, I can't have uh, you know, four lights part of two groups. Each light can only be part of one group, and that really slows down programming. Now, I do have to hand it to them um, with the keyboard shortcuts, and if you um, go through and selectively name your short names for your different lights, you can kind of get around this. 
sort of. Next, um, the Q list. Okay, so Lightkey introduced the Q list, I believe, in version 2.9. It wasn't there when I first started using it. And there's no tracking to the Q list. And so while every other intermediate or professional grade lighting console uses tracking, like he doesn't. And what tracking is, is just simply saying, hey, what happened in Q1 is going to be assumed in Q2 unless you change it. And the fact that Lightkey looks at each queue 100% separately and nothing tracks through, while it's a little bit easier for beginners to understand, it frustrates me to no end because it slows down everyone else. And I've taught tracking, I've taught this concept here on Learn Stage Lighting to a lot of people because a lot of consoles use it. And why do they use it? Because it saves you a ton of time when you learn it. And last, I really wish they had open sound control support so I could control the console with my Touch OSC on a tablet that I've already got and be good to go. So as I mentioned a couple minutes ago, I'm going to have a second video coming out soon, or you can see it here if it already exists, that's going to talk about the things I don't like about Lightkey. But at the end of the day, Lightkey is going to be great for you if you do want to run your lights max style. And in fact, you can download the demo, check out my link below, and patch all your lights. You just won't get output to them until you buy. So you can really go in there, follow the tutorials that I'm going to have here soon. I've got one already for Lightkey 2.9, but I'll update them for Lightkey 3. And you can download the demo, follow along, see if you like it, see if you don't. If you don't like it, or you think the cost is just too much, you'd rather use something much less expensive, then go ahead, choose something much less expensive. But if it's the kind of program that you start working with it and you say, you know what, this is for me, then check it out, buy it through my link, it gets me a small commission, helps us do what we're doing here at Lauren Stage Lighting, and I will see you in our next video, so be sure to subscribe. Thanks.